Well, Jack, we're back for another Best of the Worst. Wow. We took a little time off yeah. uh, after Birdemic 3. I think we all needed a, uh, Just... a mental break. Well, we needed to look inward. Yeah. That was trash. And uh, we're doing something a little different this time. Oh. We're doing a standard three movie episode, but you, Tim, and Rich are each going to be picking one movie. What? So we're going to be, yeah, picking them out. Usually we have them, you know, kind of planned out ahead of time. Absolutely. But I have no idea what you guys are going to pick. You guys have no idea what you're going to pick. There's only two stipulations. Oh, shit. One, uh, you each have to pick from a different genre. Okay. So you're going first if you pick... You know, sci-fi, then they can't pick sci-fi. All right. And the other stipulation, you only have 16 hours to make your selection. Oh, no. So that's where I like, I'm going to probably stick to this area, the sci-fi fantasy. This is my wheelhouse. This is what I enjoy the most. Don't forget that we do have a whole other room with DVDs and Blu-rays. I think it just like, just to stink it up. <laughs> I'm almost like uh, Aladdin and his magic lamp. Well, I, I think you need to ask yourself, how much do you hate us? Well, it's not, no, it's not a hate thing. <laughs> but, no, 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 I mean, it could be. It could be, It yeah. could be a hate thing. It could thing. be a self-loathing. <laughs> Some people just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> True. An, 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 another fun cover. Qu I thought I was going to say Quest Thunder. It's Quiet Thunder, oh. which is an oxymoron. Oh. Which is a word you might not know, but I do. Oh. <laughs> uh, we were just being nice to each other. No, apparently not anymore. We got two copies of it. That means two people have thought this movie was worthy of sending to us. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but we also have like eight copies of It's Pat. <laughs> this is too many. This is too many, and I, uh... Urinal. <laughs> and he, ah! <laughs> I think this might be the key, the, the Blu-rays. It's a very small section. It's a very small section, but that's a good thing. See, a few years ago, I think it's changing now, but it used to be like a few years ago, the only shit that made it onto Blu-ray was the good shit. Jack, you have 15 hours and 38 minutes left. Hawk the Slayer. Okay. I'm not, okay, I'm not a horror guy, but we have Blu-ray. We have painted cover. Oh, yeah. And we're looking at the back of the box. That looks like some fun Monster Man makeup. I'm gonna trust the Blu-ray. <laughs> All right, I've changed my mind. Oh. I, I, I like this cover better. So, uh, what does what SOV movie mean? Shot on video. Ah, oh. It, this is shot on video which is bad, but the, the guy looks like he has a funny face, and I, I don't know, this is a fucking crapshoot no matter what. Kid with the x-ray eyes. We all wanted him. <laughs> and of course, he's a creep. Oh, you know what? Yes, this one. X-ray eyes, because he doesn't want to see naked women, he just wants to see their bones. Oh my god, that's horrifying. <laughs> this is it. This is it. What? How's that, little dude? Uh, okay, Hawk the Slayer. Once upon a time, long ago, but perhaps not far away. Yeah, they, okay, they're doing a they're doing a Star Wars thing. Uh, you called it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's wearing Han Solo's fucking vest. Yeah, yeah. All right. There were two brothers, Hawk, John Terry, the younger brother. Uh, was destined for greatness, possessing gifts of strength, honor, duty, and courage. Voltan, Jack Palance, the elder, was a villain capable of great cruelty, hideously deform. Oh, f wait, sh what? F what? no, this is, I'm, it's uh, it's hard to read, is what I'm gonna say. Jack, do, do you need do you need glasses for your glasses? I just you're, had an eye exam. You're, you're holding it like this, and you're wearing glasses. Yeah. But what do you have? What do you have trouble with? What do you have trouble no, with? Well, it's just, one. It's just like you know, like the uh, a comma and a period look very Jack, similar. Jack, that word is the. The. Thank you. Uh, 
The hideously deformed Voltan roamed the land under a black mask so none could look on his ghastly face. When their father is killed by the hand of his firstborn, Voltan, Hawk swears revenge. Uh, but Hawk soon has more than just his father's death to avenge. The perverse Voltan and his son Drago have kidnapped the Abbess of Cadenbury. F finally, somebody is reading worse than I do. <laughs> There's only one way to settle this. I forbid this. You stay out of this, Fitzwalter. Well, little man, has the quake in your belly stopped your mouth? I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> beep -bop, beep -bop. Is he a cyborg <laughs> elf? <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy Westworld? Right. Use <laughs> your sword, pig. Do not fuck me. Do not fuck me. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Do not fuck me. All right. So, uh, a slaughter day. I I I remember now is shot on video. Which, which means we're going to get some feeders level trash, and I apologize. Don't apologize to me. I was on, I was on team feeders. But I, I was not. Uh, okay. <laughs> the best shot on video movie you've never seen. Oh, yeah, I get yeah, you. Yeah, I gotta get my papers on. <laughs> A rarely seen super obscurity of the shot on video era, and arguably the most insane and ambitious micro budget horror action movie ever made. In the rural recesses of Hawaii, a pair of friends must fight an ancient evil force brought to life by an occult book that possesses a group of construction workers, turning them into murderous maniacs. Shot and edited on consumer grade equipment by twin brothers Brent and Blake Cousins. Also twins, just like feeders? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh boy. I am I am terrified of this movie. Rich, you literally picked I, like, your least favorite type of movie for us to do. I, the cover was cool. It's a great cover. Do we, if we want to punctuate this moment, uh, a copy of The Dark is right next to Rich. <laughs> oh my god! Look at that. Just looming over. Just looming over you, Rich. What could have been? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You could have picked me. I'm gonna trust the Blu-ray. <laughs> anymore, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you guys just picked really dark shit. And I'm like, yeah. it's a beautiful day outside. <laughs> Why don't we watch something a little lighthearted? And it's the kid with the x-ray eyes. Oh. Sometimes you can see too much. 12-year-old Bobby can't wait to grow up. His dreams of dangerous car chases and saving beautiful women. Mm -hmm. He dreams of becoming a top-secret spy. When he finds a special pair of glasses, Bobby thinks his dreams have come true. Soon the government agents are hot on his trail trying to get the glasses for themselves. And with his Uncle Chuck, Robert Carradine, <laughs> um, Bobby must outsmart a pair of bumbling thieves and outrun the local police department on their way to a final showdown with the real CIA. So it's not really x-ray eyes. He has x-ray glasses. Yeah. Very misleading. I think one, if we think of in terms of superpowers, x-ray vision is the lamest. Yeah. Like you can't do anything practical with that. Bobby, he's my brother's kid. I'm watching him. Is he feeling okay? Two, I would love it if this went like dark drama territory and he just like discovered people had like heart palpitations. Yeah, I mean, it's like you think he's yeah. scoping out the boobage. Yeah. But no, the it, bonage. Miss, you have an irregular heartbeat. You should get that checked out. Yeah. 
So why do you need change anyway? You already have a couple hundred bucks on you. I do not, you little creep. Hey, man, what are you trying to pull anyway? That's really good work, Bob. I mean, you can be a homeless person you probably have a couple hundred bucks. It doesn't mean you can afford a home. <laughs> right. You probably have something squirreled away. It's not like you can, you know, keep it in your home. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, that's a good message for children, though. Just assume that all homeless people are scam artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about a burger? You know that place down the road? Oh, yeah, Boomerang Burgers. Yeah, yeah. You want to go there? All right, but... Can I bring the goggles? No, I don't think so. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Great scene. Push over. Great scene. <laughs>Like, I'm not saying they all need to be curated, like, oh, we've definitely heard of this. It's good to throw some randomness in there. I also don't think we can go full random, like Black Spine. I think that's a lot of torture. Hmm. All, all I know is that from now on, Jack and Tim, you're not allowed to pick anything. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> I am, I, if I touch anything, it hit my hands hard <laughs> away. But. I am comfortable in saying mine was not the worst tonight, so I'm okay. The, the only time in the existence of humanity that someone can say, thank God for the kid with the x-ray eyes. <laughs> <laughs> to help make me not look like a piece of shit. Yes, basically. So thank you, kid, and thank you, Tim. Mm. Thank you, Fred Olin Ray. So, Jack, why don't you tell us about how you're not a huge piece of shit? Shit! <laughs> okay, so I saw Hawk the Slayer on the shelf, and I had heard the name before. So I thought to myself, oh, I'll get a little ringer in there. I've heard of that name before. I was wrong. <laughs> I was very wrong. It was very boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But in the back of my, in the recesses of, oh, someone has told me about Hawk the Slayer. Ah, we're gonna watch it. I thought I'd get, get a little ace up my sleeve. Didn't work out that way. You know what, sometimes we've done this before where we try and pick ringers yeah. and it turns out to be a total fail, failure. The Pat Oswalt Plinketto episode. Everything on that Plinketto board was intended to be a ringer. Yeah. And they were all awful. And now he's never going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> he, not, not only will he not come back here, he won't tour in Milwaukee anymore. Yeah, just the entire state of Wisconsin is out. This is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Holy f Okay, so Hawk the Slayer uh, is a 1980 fantasy movie. Um, blatantly trying to pull any Star Wars visual reference that they can in a fantasy type setting. Uh, it's Hawk as the good guy versus Jack Palance as the bad guy. Vexon? Vax? Saxon? Vaxon. That sounds like a medication. Vexon. Voltan. Uh, Voltan uh, killed his, uh, killed Hawk's wife. Voltan uh, is, a, we are told, a very bad guy. Has an evil army, presumably wreaking havoc on the land. We never we see We don't see that. any of that. <laughs> and he, he wants that gold. <sighs> Drago! The, the main story, the, the plot, is that Hawk needs to assemble a group of misfits in order to fight Voltan. On, on paper, that sounds good. Yes. On it paper. sounds mm -hmm. standard. And it sounds standard, but what does the group do? <laughs> How does he assemble the group? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... What's the ticking clock element? <laughs> What'll happen if Voltan gets the gold? <laughs> These are all perfectly good questions that the movie really should have addressed in some fashion, yes. Well, this isn't a freeze frame, he's just standing there. Yes. Just stab his father. Oh my yeah, god. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> they just watched Citizen Kane. They're like, we need that moment in our film. We're only two minutes into our film. The I people know. are bored already. Everyone's already bored. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, 
they, they, they knocked it out of the park when it came to just having the look of an 80s fantasy film. Yes. It looks like an 80s fantasy yeah. film. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little bland. I have a hard but rewarding task for you. Our wagon lies with a broken wheel a mile down the road. If you will repair it and return it here before sunset, you should be paid handsomely. It's very British. I kept thinking of the whole movie because it's shot so like generically, so flatly, and everybody has the British accents. I kept waiting for jokes, like a Monty Python thing. <laughs> <laughs> I kept waiting for every scene to end with some sort of punchline, and then the punchline just never came. <laughs> oh, good. I couldn't see in there. <laughs> a lot of recognizable faces in this, though. Jack Palance. Um, uh, the dad from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory yep, yep, shows yep. up briefly. Baruch Assault's, Baruch Assault's dad, yeah. 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 And you spoke of many things. Some that guy looks familiar, too. He played a Vulcan on a Star Trek at some point. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I guarantee that's not how I know him, but he's probably a character actor man. Probably. But in a bunch of things. Rich, Mike's not here this episode. You have to pull this weight. <laughs> I'm trying to remember which episode that was. <laughs> Why do you take up He was four different characters in Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> What's the actor's name? Uh, Two thousand pieces of gold and buy her freedom. I shall William, William Morgan Shepard. Okay. He's the villain in the Elvira movie. That's, <laughs> that's where I know him from. <laughs> Both of you have a problem. Both of you have a real problem. <laughs> Uh, Patricia Quinn from Rocky Horror Picture Show is in it. And the dark one will not be at his ministerings long. Even even though like you can see her mouth. Yeah, yep. she's the the good witch, not the not the witch that's spraying goo into Jack Palance's eye. I don't but know they that all sound was. this. All the witches are like, ah, I'm a witch, and I'm gonna help you find your way. Well, that's what then, you gotta do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like so good or not, good or evil, your voice is the same. A strange malady affects the flesh. It is beyond all skill to render a permanent cure. Steal yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes it really confusing if you're trying to that talk was, to that a That was going to be the plot twist in Hawk the Slayer 2. They're the same woman. Oh, there is a, yeah, the movie does end with a teaser. Jack Palance will return. <laughs> We have further need of you, Dark One. Your sleep of death will not last long. I'll be back. As we are currently scraping the bottom of the barrel for IP sequels, Hawk the Slayer. <laughs> No, it's out there. It's out there. Just, no, we we kept mentioning Kroll during this. I think yep. Kroll has a better chance of being revived than Hawk the Slayer. Kroll has a really cool weapon. They they tried with Hawk the Slayer to give him a cool weapon. Yeah, it's a sword. It's got a it's but, got a glowy bit to it, and it floats through his hand. hand. A fist, uh, and it, it's a hand. Yeah. Yeah. So when it's on in his back, you just see the little fists behind him all the time. Right. It's very egg. weird looking. Right, which which really is a symbol of black power. Yeah. yeah. So if you think about it, the movie, which has no black people in it, <laughs> is pretty progressive. <laughs> I was protecting myself. Silence, scum. A contest. <laughs> It's like the same shots we've already seen. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Again, they know. They know, like, eh, we, we need something here. <laughs> is he close? Is he, is he? <laughs> It'd be great if these away. two things never connected. <laughs> or he just keeps going, he just yeah. grabs right by. <laughs> <laughs> there were uh, there were dwarfs though, uh, who a dwarf like, a dwarf. Yes, uh, so this is a fantasy movie. Uh, we have a dwarf who really is just kind of a short guy. Yeah. We have a giant who's just kind of a tall guy, like <laughs> Gunt. Was that his name? G uh, Gort. 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 But if you put that. 
them together, you have the illusion that one of them is a dwarf, which is why they were constantly teamed up on camera. Oh boy, was he a clever dwarf. So clever, fooling the big oafish hammer dude. Stealing his chicken. Stealing his chicken, yeah. but not even having to run away, just like, like really enjoying it. Thank you, sister. That will be sufficient for me. Now, please, mm -hmm. some food for my friends. What is it? Nothing. Enjoy the food. It probably won't affect you in any case. Do you know something, dwarf, that I don't? The food will taste just the same to you. Little brother, you're trying my patience. Unless you want to end up even shorter, your tongue had better speak quickly. Why do you say it will taste the same? We are in a monastery. Surely that's clear even to you. Damn it, little brother, what does that mean, holy food? You find out. You're the expert. No, but why not? What are companions for if not to help one another? <laughs> well? I can't be sure. Little brother. Sister of the faith. Tell my ox like friend here. Would what you describe this? Holy? It comes from God. Like, but you can fix that. <laughs> in editing, right? <laughs> like, you can. I mean, you can fix it by just cutting it out. <laughs> but you could even tighten that up, right? Like. You could, you could. You can. You do that in a way where it's a successful joke. Yeah, <laughs> I swear you yeah. can. <laughs> Using that footage, I think you can just... You know the best thing about that scene? That it just goes on. They just let it breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just let that scene go on for 37 minutes. That's right. Just let the actors have a little fun. Was yeah. that the only thing the character did in the movie too? Yeah. His sole contribution to the, the team he really died. <laughs> that was a big contribution. He died and he conned one of his own teammates out of some chicken. Those are the two things he. That, that was that was his contribution. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah. didn't really even try to like endear his death. Like you know how sometimes you see it. It's like oh. It well, well, Hawk might have dying. been sad, but we would have no idea because he just doesn't Hawk? emote. If, if we can say one thing positive, Jack Palance is giving it his all. Oh, I like a man with spirit. Look well, little brother, and together we shall seek out the hiding place of the gold. And let the secret die. Now. You're <laughs> 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 hey, my number one guy. You are my number one guy. Let the blood rain from the He's, he's, we compared this a little bit while watching it to the, the early 2000s Dungeons and Dragons movie in that our main character assembles a group to go on the adventure and then the group doesn't do fucking anything. Um, but the villain is overacting like crazy. In that case, it's Jeremy Irons. Here we got Jack Palance and he's, he's having fun. This movie made me question, and something I, I haven't just questioned about this, just like what, what makes a good generic hero from a, like a bad generic hero? I think, I think we decided on just the actor. Yeah. Yeah, if you're charismatic, even if your character is, is poorly written or kind of dull, you can do something with it. Cause Clint, Clint Eastwood in The Good, The Bad, The yeah. Ugly, he's very stoic, there's not a lot to him, mm -hmm. but he's great. Like any, any sort of ability to emote would have been helpful. Like, you know, like, because Clint Eastwood is very stoic. Like, he doesn't show a lot of emotions, but he still has that charisma. Yeah. But, like, if Hawk the Slayer looked sad when his friend died, or his girlfriend slash wife, that's when you get real actor whiplash, is, is him clashing with Jack Palance, who's so over the top. Yes. <laughs> Oh no! Oh. He didn't look like he cared. Sister, no I think he was unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's just a terrible actor. Yeah, because he put his arm around her, so he wasn't knocked out. He wanted. It, it seemed like the revenge for his wife. But then once his friends died, then he's like, no, it's revenge. Yeah. Like then it's it, like he got a little more pissy. Yes, a and also it's like, what have you been doing this whole time? Have you not been revenging this whole time? Like, no, they've been sitting around in a monastery eating chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
They're, they're so bad at everything that the witch has to come in at the last minute and be like, hold on. I'm being saved by the, the party surplus employee. <laughs> <laughs> it's just silly string. Bartz's. What the hell is happening? What are these? They're bouncy balls. <laughs> They're bouncy balls. So silly string and bouncy balls. That's her. Uh... <laughs> All right. Yeah, you, you think it's a dart gun coming through that that door and the guy's like what the fuck is this yeah i thought it was gonna be like, gonna go, yeah like thwink right in the face yeah. or whatever but no 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 none of us could have expected silly string <laughs> <laughs> what year was this the 80 80 yeah. this is like that was like the early days of silly string right <laughs> i don't know I, I, like probably dude's face was stained green <laughs> for months <laughs> Make the, I'm gonna benefit, give this movie the benefit of the doubt. I make the assumption that when you saw this for the first time, Silly String wasn't in your mind as much as it would be today, and it wouldn't stand out as, oh my God, oh. they just sprayed Silly String it, all over it's the It's this new space. thing not yeah. a lot of people know about, yes. so we can't get away with it. Like yes. the, the prop master came across this like aerosolized oh, this string is maker. I've never seen anything oh, like this, this before. This is fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. They could say it's like, oh, it's green cheese whiz. <laughs> I mean, Cheese Whiz was before Silly String, but that would smell disgusting. It wasn't projectile, though, right? It well, would... I mean, the pressure of the can, like, if you, you could, like, bleh. You really shake it up. You hook, okay. a, you hook a compressor up to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you guys know compressor work. <laughs> it's true. I've been sprayed. <laughs> oh, that's right. We covered you in shit once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> liquid, liquid shit. Liquid shit. <laughs> Kind of the same thing. Let's see, so I, I, I understand why you uh, invite me now. These are all <laughs> pity. We're sorry for covering you in shit. Next, the elf. And everyone else is okay with just sitting there? I, uh... <laughs> so the witch lady is just teleporting him to different areas to gather people for his group? Yeah. Rather than meeting them organically on a fun journey? <laughs> How do you how do you fuck up a fantasy story? I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world, right? You need to go on the quest. Yeah. You start here. You need to go over there and do the thing. And all of these things block you on your path, so you have to get past the things. Yeah. Like like we 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 met our our group of adventurers in like a normal fantasy movie. They'd be going through the woods, and oh, here's the obstacle, and someone comes to help them, and they meet this character naturally Jeez. through the journey of their here. Just, just the witch. I'm gonna teleport, to teleport some to the next place where he saves the person. You're gonna sit between some glowing hula hoops and then teleport, and all your friends are just gonna sit here in dead silence while you're gone. And on on one hand, they're like that, that's very lazy, very fucking lazy. Just we'll teleport you to the next thing. We meet the next person and recruit them. On the other hand. Would it have been that much more difficult just to have them walking along on their journey and meeting these people naturally? You don't even have to rig up a weird hula hoop special. No! Yeah. no! <laughs> just walk through the woods and say, hey, you. <laughs> hey, you're... hey, my old friend, I've come to recruit you. I'll help you out of this jam you're in. You're not going to make me sit in a room and stare at nothing for a while <laughs> while you go off on your adventure, are you? Yeah, there is that one. They try to have little magical creatures in one scene, but they realize they look so bad that then they tried to edit them out as much as humanly possible. They were in the, the, the spider web yeah. land between they, they those go, two portals. I forgot about yeah. the magic portal that took them to the spider web corridor. Leave this circle of light and I may be powerless to help you. Hell yeah. Oh, oh my god. Hey, oh. Oh, it's classic Halloween sound effect. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm in spirit Halloween. This is so cool. <laughs> An elf and bogey from the silver forest. I'm a big spider person. Black and, and bald. I like how they're like, dwarf like we, we'll never know where to go. I guess we'll just follow this straight path. <laughs> <laughs> In the spider way. Right. <laughs> There's no way we could have figured this out. Wolves hunt where there were none before. <laughs> <laughs> Show the puppet! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. God. Well, that was... That was brief. 
They made it through. <laughs> they almost got lost in one single hallway. <laughs> Which was very crawl because there was a moment in Crawl where they go into a fucking spider web and there's a spider lady. Oh, okay. I was but just thinking no, of no. Uh, like Beastmaster, we see little yeah. little creatures, little puppets, and they look great. Have you ever seen the movie uh, the movie Troll, the first one? Oh yeah, all the where, little, yeah, well, that's all like, the, that's the same effects guy that did the little creatures for Beastmaster. Oh, okay. So that's they look really similar. So yeah. yeah, you got the main person who transformed into the whole thing, but then there's a little all sorts trolls. Of little guys. It's like, bah! They have a they, musical number in Troll really? too. It's great. Oh. Isn't isn't the main <laughs> character in that a kid who learns magic called Harry Potter? Yes. Yes. Uh, my name is Harry Potter. Nice to meet you, Porter. Uh, no, Potter. Uh, and I review books. What a strange oh, yeah, fact. yeah, that's right. And they were trying to, John Carl Beekler, before he passed away, he was trying to get a troll reboot off the ground. And oh. because of a legal loophole, he could have called the kid Harry Potter. Oh. So he was trying to capitalize on the fact that Harry Potter was now a famous character by making his own Harry Potter movie. God damn. Yeah, wow. it didn't end up happening. And now he's dead, but what can you do? <laughs> do it. Do it from beyond the grave. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be hilarious to get a group of people to go see Harry, a new Harry Potter movie. Yeah. Harry yeah. Potter and the shitty horror movie. Welcome, brother elf. I think I said when we watched this, this feels like 50% of a fantasy movie. Yeah. Like yeah. 50% actual trying. Like, I think some of the costumes look okay, neat. Yeah. yeah. Like, I really I really don't mind the sword prop with the glowing thing and the sword. There's something to make the sword stand out as a unique thing. I I actually really liked the little, like, practical effect of, like, the hand opening up and, and grabbing yes. the horn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 50 effort and then other times like the spider cord nothing happens what nothing happens because <laughs> nothing happens what's going on yeah you know even though she didn't uh, say a lot my favorite character was woman um, <laughs> yes which woman the witch the witch woman oh, which woman yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. she actually credited as woman too right? yes yeah she's the credited woman. as the woman woman <laughs> Was his wife, did she have a name or was it like wife? <laughs> uh, and you know what? I liked her whole getup, like creepy sorceress, the cover, you know, covering up her eyes. Like she had a cool vibey thing sure. and a ton of Super Balls. <laughs> a ton of Super Balls and the innards of a snow globe. Yeah. yeah. Right out, yeah. But I'm, I'm, at least, you know what? At least a magical thing happened. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, you know what the theme here is tonight? Effort. Mm. Effort. Like, this is kind no. of like a quasi effort. Yeah. Like, this, this is m more effort than something like this deserves. Yes. Yes. What about Kid with the X ray? None. <laughs> okay. I thought you were implying that they all had effort. No. But it <laughs> no. Catch an F. No. It's a, a scale of effort here. Like, oh, here is some effort. Yeah. Not I, enough. <laughs> I was acutely aware at all points of this evening of how much effort was being put in at yeah, any given yeah. time. Mm. This, this felt like kind of like a job to them. They're like, yeah, we gotta make it a fantasy film. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll make a fantasy film, I guess. Like they're just punching the clock and... Yeah. Uh, what if the actors were on strike and there was supposed to be dialogue in all those scenes where they're like... <laughs> And the director's like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking use this. I'm gonna use all this. You think you're fucking winning this? No, nobody. No, no, this is gonna be in the movie. I'm gonna use all this and I'm gonna you're gonna look foolish. Yeah. There's a British Actors Guild strike. Mm. Just during that movie. And that's, and that's why like Hawk had to, uh, the actor who played Hawk had to appear in the movie contractually, but refused to act. <laughs> yes, just like, there we go. I will read my lines as I am contractually obligated to do so. But Jack Palance, the American actor, was still uh, a 100% the, pro. Uh, the Screen Actors Guild Union was fine, not the British Actors Guild. Yeah. If you if you don't finish this movie, we're gonna hire James Cameron to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Famously on Aliens, the the British cast did not like him. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, the British crew. Because they wanted it. to work constantly and they wanted to take their tea breaks yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. There you go. They, they go, we'll stick Cameron on you. <laughs> Nobody no, wants no, no, that. No, no, no. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fine, we'll finish the movie. Huh. <laughs> Hawk the Slayer. We did it. We, did. we slayed it. <laughs> we slayed it. I think I've seen
seen part of this on late night cable when I was young, and I just turned it off. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah. That's what, this is one of those movies, yeah, where you say, I saw part of it on cable, and I stopped watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what this is. <laughs> So, Rich, <laughs> uh, you picked Slaughter Day, uh, a bold choice. We got very excited when we saw its length, and, and, and then... Uh, 58 minutes. 58 minutes. So tell us all about Slaughter Day. Yes, yes, I would be glad to do that. Okay, okay. We, we were excited about the length. I think I did a, a real-life fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. yeah. Is this not including like like wheel stuff or like uh, Black Spine? Is this the shortest movie we've ever watched? I'm pretty sure it has to be, right? I think we've we've turned a couple of them off after like 20 minutes. Yeah, but <laughs> the movies continued. We just didn't see what happened. Right. Right. Right, because generally speaking, in VHS land, it needed to be at least a minimum of 79 or 80 minutes yeah. in order to get distribution. In the magical realm of Blu-ray, there is no limit. Well, I wonder about that, like, because this was shot on video in the early 90s, what did we say? Like early 90s. 90s. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it ever got any sort of release before this, so I don't even know how the Visual Vengeance, the company that put this out, knew about it, because it's borderline not a movie that we should be talking about on our show. And I take your order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be in your movie. It's it's it, it's a bunch of kids fucking around in Hawaii. Our our bare minimum requirement is it has to have a barcode. That's true. And this has a barcode on it. Yeah, now it does. This has an official release. Um, directed by brothers, who confusingly have the last name Cousins, <laughs> the Cousins brothers. I think I know where he's going. Where? I think he might be going to the cliffs. Come on, no, a shortcut. What did, I think you said something like like Bill and Ted's Evil Dead Adventure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bill, Bill and Ted's Hawaiian Evil Dead Adventure. It was, it was very like, bro, you're bro. reading the Necronomicon? Yeah. We should get the hell out of here. Like now, big time. And so. I think I think explaining what this is rather than what the plot is is probably more important. And will take longer than explaining the <laughs> plot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, the the the, the plot is uh, these two uh, guys own a construction company and they're kind of dicks to their employees. Mm -hmm. And one of them is trying to study the Necronomicon, and he gets annoying because his bosses want him to work rather than study the Necronomicon. <laughs> so like then, hanging in trees. Did you yeah. notice how he's like, he's like just oh, slumped look. over a tree going, oh, I'm reading the Necronomicon yeah. like it's a fucking tiger beat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then the guy at the Necronomicon, question mark, question mark, question mark. He has a gas mask on that turns him into an undead evil being. And then he tries to kill his bosses. And then people run around for 58 minutes. Yeah, and you can, the gas mask, if somebody else breathes into it, they also become a monster, an evil monster. Yes, but yeah. seemingly a, a lesser, more killable version of a monster. Yeah. Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> just meat flying yes. out of the stump. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh, wow. That's a hell of an axe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's your, your turn, turn bro. bro. It's enough, man. It's your turn, bro. It's good that we share. <laughs> <laughs> And this is made on VHS by what appears to be just two jackasses who live in Hawaii, and they wanted to have a fun time making a movie. They're, they're fans of Evil Dead and Kung Fu movies. Yes. And, hey, I got a camera. I think it'd be really fun. Let's, let's make our own movie. And then they had a lot of fun for a few days. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. a few days, it was a blast. <laughs> And then you can kind of tell precisely when they get bored. Yeah. <laughs> or when they're like, we just got to get this done now. Because the first 20 minutes of this, oh, I'll say 20 minutes, mm -hmm. is actually kind of amazing. Ah, 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 ah. 
<laughs> ah, that's really great. That was really great. Oh, these kids. <laughs> Some of this is really clever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Technically terrible because it's shot on VHS. It's apparently edited in camera and there's a lot of sound problems. Mm -hmm. But creativity and maximum effort. Yeah. Camera Cleverness motions, of their effects. Dollyings, uh, doing clever shit with like arm dismemberments where they got <laughs> <laughs> great shit. None of it's convincing, but it's all incredibly charming. It's all incredibly charming. It took thought. They gave a shit about what they were doing. Yeah. Well, and they were ambitious in terms of like early on, there's a, a, a action scene on their truck that's driving down the road. Yes. They get one of the cousin brothers gets out of the side uh, window and gets into the back bed of the truck and they're fighting on it. While it's moving. Hanging off of it. And it's like, this is pretty, like that's the kind of thing you do when you're young and stupid. <laughs> but luckily they, they have it captured on camera forever now. How, how confusing are their family reunions? <laughs> <laughs> or can they find them anymore? It's like, where is, did you make another fucking movie over the 50th wedding anniversary of grandma? <laughs> God damn it, cousins, brothers. <laughs> I'm going to call your cousin's cousins and tell them uh, to call their cousin uncles who your cousin's uncles are lawyers. They're going to sue you for this. <laughs> oh, nephew nieces. No, no, she got married. Her name is actually Smith now. No, no, but she's really my cousin. <laughs> it's probably a whole lot of confusion. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, they got that screw-on wide-angle lens. Oh, yeah, so you can see the, the mat on the outside? Yep. I bet they made skate videos. <laughs> That's what this looks like, yeah. yeah. Main highlight is the cinematography. Yeah. Which at sometimes is a wide angle lens shoved quite literally up someone's nose. It, look, it looks like a skateboard video. Skateboard yeah. video, not the greatest in the world. But at other times, a flowing camera, they know to get insert shots. Uh, specifically thinking about the uh, the truck battle scene. Mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, the, the bed of the truck, uh, the bed door falls open and one of the cousin's brothers is like about to fall off, but he hooks his foot on the truck. They get a close up insert shot <laughs> of his foot hooking on the truck. And again, that seems like that's basic. That's filmmaking 101. Mm -hmm. We've they seen some shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've seen more competent movies that don't get the coverage that this movie does. Yeah. And so, like, they have interesting shots all over the place mixed in with, like, horrible, shaky, garbage, skateboard, <laughs> wide-angle lens shots. <laughs> <laughs> that VHS blurry sneer, yeah, with the music and everything distorted. It's all teeny. Yeah. It's a cacophony, but it's it's there is some real talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, raw talent. This hasn't been refined yet. <laughs> they only made one other movie after this, yeah. like over a decade later, called Rising Dead, which I haven't watched, but I have a DVD copy of it, so I'll I'll put some footage of it over this talking right now. I have no idea what it looks like. I, I suspect that's because at the end of this, it got miserable for them. It, I, they, yeah. they hit that they hit that point where it's like, oh, we gotta we gotta finish this. Well, the, the we first have half, to yeah, finish that this. first part when they're in that house, there's so many effects, so many gags. And it's one of those things where it's like, and talking about the, the shots and getting inserts and stuff, where it's like, every shot informs the next one in terms of selling the gag. Yeah. Like the part when he gets sucked into the book where it's like we have to have his legs come up and then the next shot we have to shoot it down. And so it's very like complicated early on. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, you can tell they got sick of it and they ran out of story ideas because mm -hmm. they had to have been making this up as they went along. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. the second half, there's a whole long like action chase scene where they're just kind of running around town. I think the dialogue was, get him. Get him, get him, get him. 
Get the enemy! Kill the enemy! They had like one friend who could do roundhouse kicks. And then by the time you get to the second half of the movie, they're just like punching each other on <laughs> camera. And they, they, they learned what we have all known for decades. <laughs> movie making is miserable. Yeah. <laughs> Every single aspect of making movies is a giant pain in the ass. And it's never worth it. And once that initial, once that initial excitement wore off, <laughs> and they got their good ideas out of it, um, and I'm sure, I'm sure they hit a point where like, oh, Jesus Christ, we gotta finish this shit. Yeah. Oh my God, he got a haircut. <laughs> he my got bro- a fucking haircut. My brother was graduating, man. My mom didn't want me at the ceremony oh, looking like that. <laughs> find a wig. We gotta get a wig. Oh, this wig looks terrible. Let's uh, have him just rip the hair off. <laughs> rip the wig off. <laughs> And that really is, yeah, that's the charm of this, is watching, like, you can just see the creative thought process for everything they do through the whole movie. And that's funny, too, because they keep talking about the Necronomicon and the evil forces, and they're clearly inspired by Evil Dead, but the actual Necronomicon in the movie is the H.R. Giger art book (laughs) called Necronomicon. Look, it's a book, and it said Necronomicon Necronomicon on it, Jay. (laughs) Good enough. Look, look, that sounds goofy, right? But there's also a segment where somebody gets sucked into this book. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's legit amazing. Yeah. For yeah. no budget? Wow, look at that. <laughs> yeah, and there's uh, the, the only thing that, that kind of has uh, all the effects suffer a little bit from is the, what, what I call the action effects where you can tell, because I think they edited it in camera, and so at the start of every shot, it's like, okay, go. <laughs> Hate to be that son of a bitch. Go. <laughs> so every, every, not just every like dialogue scene, but every like action scene has that problem too, where it's like right at the start of the shot, oh, they get going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, to the point where they didn't edit the sounds, and you just constantly hear the, the, the cousin's brothers off camera, go. And let's tell the other workers over there at the cabin that they got the day off. Go. 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 <laughs> Saturdays anyway. Go. <laughs> All right, wait a minute. Turn around. <laughs> now. Turn around, Doug. <laughs> yeah, and then there's like the first time where the dude's huffing on the side of the beach or whatever, and he vanishes. Oh yeah. And and, and then shot, nothing dog. happens. And then he comes back, and they're like, get out of the shot. And then he walks away and vanishes again. <laughs> no. like, yeah. Keep moving. Now this is That's easy so to weird. criticize, but commercial equipment in the 90s, and you don't have fancy digital editing. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, this, um, is, uh, yeah. this yeah. is shot on VHS, early 90s. I mean, I had a similar technique where I would mostly edit in camera. Mm-hmm. The only time I would have to, like, edit and post would be from one VCR to another, and it was just to cut out any sort of, like, fuck up. Which they did here. We know they also edited VCR to VCR because you can see the little play icon at oh, one yeah. point. <laughs> at one point you see and that. So, you know, There's you, a couple of the like rainbow edits where you pause the VCR and record again so the shot has like weird fluttering rainbow effect at so the beginning of the shot. What you would do is you'd hit play on one VCR and then as soon as you get to that point where you're, the new shot is about to start, you time it just right, hit yeah. record on your master tape. <laughs> 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 then hit pause, then you know, put in this tape, you know, get cue it up, rewind a little bit. Yeah. Play. <sighs> and that's that you, was you, editing. Yeah, <laughs> and every VCR is different, so you have to get used to the amount of time it takes after recording oh, yeah. again to when it because there's usually like a beat or two before yes. it starts recording. And every cam- every VCR was different, so you had to like get that timing down. 
Um, but then also, like, I had a little mixer thing. So it would go out of one VCR, into the mixer, into the other VCR, so that I could add music. Oh. And I think they did that, too, because that's why they, they weren't able to, like, edit the on-camera audio. Right. But they did add music in posts. Yes. Um, the awesome, like, editorial, as it happened, rock song. <laughs> I'll be in your movie if you just play one of my tasty jams. <laughs> I take back my compliments about them making a score and not using a local band. It, this is most likely those two guys, though. Yeah. The lead guys. This is them singing. Yeah, but the score stuff was kind of great. They're singing yeah. about the... It's like getting out of town. Oh, is that the lyrics? Yeah. <laughs> There's there's voiceover at one point and it sounds like they recorded it onto a little like boombox and then had a microphone up to the boombox <laughs> and you can't understand it. You guys had everything. You owned your own construction company and the crew to go with it. So, you know, we have this wide angle lens that uh, is a lot of time just, you know, flying all over the place. You, a lot of movement. Uh, the VHS adds a wobble to it and then there's some additional noise here and there. Blah, 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 blah. And then the sound is like when you have a tin can with the shoelace. Yeah. And, and the it, music sometimes is very like tinny and kind of hurts your brain. <laughs> I think what this really shows is the importance of sounds, like effects and sound mixing. Yeah. Because they clearly didn't have the ability to do that. Yeah. But like, there's so much energy to the shots and everything. Like, if you had better sound effects, it would go along. That's what I'm saying. Like, just take, like, a chunk of this and make all new stuff. Yeah. You could yeah, really... Yeah, dub over all the dialogue. You could really make, like... Maybe re-edit it so you don't see them, like, getting ready to start at the beginning of every shot. Yeah, and, like, giggle. Yeah. It's kind of like, like, remember when the Blair Witch came out in theaters and people were complaining about, like, motion sickness yes. and nausea from the, the shaky VHS camera footage? Yes. It's similar to that. So I guess all what I'm saying here is, like, if, like, I do recommend people watch this because it is fascinating and endearing and a wonderful, like, ode to just kids having fun. Yeah. But if, if your only foray into bad movies is I've seen The Room once and kind of liked it... <laughs> This is too much. Like, you got to work up to this or else you're going to puke. You're going to puke in your living room. Um, That's the quote for the box there. <laughs> you're going to puke in your living room. I say we go to Hanukkah Bay, cash our savings in, and call ourselves history. <laughs> Fucking amen. <it. laughs> well, it's also, like you said, endearing is the right word because it's, it's telling two stories. There's the story that's happening in the movie, but then as you're watching it, you can tell the story of the behind the scenes, like you're saying, like, yeah, they clearly got sick of it. They wanted to finish it. Um, and that's all, I mean, you hear the directions off camera, go. <laughs> so, so you're kind of, it's like, kind of like watching a movie and the behind the scenes making of the movie in one thing. It's yeah. very bizarre. <laughs> Oh, he's wearing like a, a punching vest. Oh. That's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Why are they fighting each other though? Because they're possessed by evil. Yeah, they have the mask. Oh, but they're not wearing the mask. Well, that's okay. Once you put on the mask, then you're just evil. Oh, yeah. okay. I don't know if it's by, by accident or by design. But they just threw expository dialogue largely in the trash. Yeah. <laughs> and no, I'm serious. The, the, the pacing of it is all the better for it. That's always the worst scenes in any of these movies. It's the exposition yes. scenes. So. There was some exposition, exposition, but we couldn't understand it because it was being recorded onto a microphone from a boombox <laughs> <laughs> in the other room or something. It was, yeah, barely audible. It's large. They don't really have any character moments. Their, their characters just run around and punch <laughs> things the entire movie. That's their only character. <laughs> Because uh, this is great. This is brilliant, and I love every second of it. <laughs> Though I am going to vomit, and I'm not going to leave the room. I'm going to vomit in here it's so that, you can yeah, get it on it's camera. It's tinny sound. Yes. It's really awful. 
Nope. You got blasted you the through the chest. chest. It's just a flush wound. Okay, another real positive. Obviously, the cousin brothers, uh, not the greatest actors in the world, but coming off of Hawk the Slayer with the actor strike, <laughs> the uh, amount of emotion and expression in their face, you oh, knew yeah. what they were. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's, like, yeah, that's the crazy thing. Like, not their acting and just like the constant energy of all the camera movements. It's in such sharp contrast to a much more traditionally professional production yes. is insane. Don't let me go! This is 80% budget, 40% effort. Mm. And this is 0% budget. <laughs> and for the, for the first half, 100% effort. Yes. Followed by about 30% effort. Yeah. Yeah. But they got it done. And then, and then, <laughs> and then finally we, we ended on 0% all around. <laughs> How's that, little dude? Go. Okay, so that was uh, uh, Slaughter Day. And uh, I guess we're on to our uh, last film for the night. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Jack, you're the host. Yay! <laughs> you, I'm the host. Do you, want, do, you want, do you want to take care of this for me? Thank you, Rich. I am the host. <laughs> The la oh, this is rated PG for parental guidance. Our last film. Um, for please go away. <laughs> <laughs> I I like it. By the way, we this you know I I like it. We we got three very distinct movies. Very different movies. Yeah. Uh, and that can be fun. You know, sometimes it's fun to watch one of this uh, or three of the same genre. Three distinct movies. Tim. Timmy Timmy Higgy. <laughs> this is, does not reflect upon my character. <laughs> I mean, it does it, reflect it, upon your judgment. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? God damn it! Shame on me for be getting. To, like, to be fair, I was behind you on this that, in that it's that, fun to do a random kids movie on the show once in a while. Once in a while, absolutely. Oh, come on, that Hulk Hogan bullshit was all we right. We gotta delve in every once in a while. So the kid with X-ray eyes, Tim. What happens in the kid with X-ray eyes? Well, first of all, he doesn't have x-ray eyes no no they're just regular eyeballs of an <laughs> asshole little kid this is awesome man if only we could see that <laughs> that would take effort yeah yeah no we're just going to see uh, random skeletons and uh, shirtless babes <laughs> and you find out why he's an asshole because he's neglected by his parents or his dad just wants to go bone his mom someplace else. You know, I could always go with you guys. Oh, that would be nice, honey, but this is a special trip. Your dad and I have been married 15 years this week. It's kind of like a second honeymoon. <laughs> What's a honeymoon? Uh, that's a long story. <laughs> we wake up, uh, it starts in the dream segment that's with right. the child, uh, like driving a, like a, a, a reptile car. Uh, well, that's yeah. probably footage from that's, something that's else. That's stock footage. Yeah. 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 Clearly, because whenever they cut him in the car, it's it's just he's just whoa. And then a much older woman. Uh, Bring Stevens. B movie Bring, veteran. Bring, Bring Stevens. Stevens yeah. Yes. Uh, who kind of is into the youngins? Gee, you sure know how to show a girl a good time. Better freshen up, baby. Women. Hang on, baby. It's gonna get fucked. Imagine directing her in that scene and be like, "Yeah, you want to fuck that kid?" And uh, you know, for possibly for legal reasons, they are not in, in. They are not next to each other. They are in two separate shots. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, this is like the fantasy of the kid. So this is right. like his, yeah. his imagination. But all these things kind of like build on each other throughout the course of the film. I think it's time for our secret agent. We can't let the bad guys take us alive, pills. I'll see you in secret agent heaven. Considering that this is, in theory, a kid's movie, it's an odd choice. Well, yeah, should we point out now, he has a pseudonym, but it's directed by Fred Olin Ray, who we recently saw, the director of Evil Tunes, 
Uh, a movie just chock full of boobs. Boobies. And, and, and uh, lingering shots of naked flesh. Uh, and that's uh, what he was known for. And now he's directing a children's film, so you know, it's gonna bleed over. So this kid, uh, his parents just need to get rid of him. They're, they're just like, <laughs> we are, we are, no, we are, go, we gotta go. Honey, I'm gonna walk with you to Uncle oh, Chuck's. Mom. Now, you, you know the way, don't you, son? Heck yeah, I've been there a bunch of times. Yeah, but what if. Honey, it's broad daylight. Chuck's house is right down there, and nothing's gonna happen to him. What? <laughs> the dad is so uh, is so impatient to get to the honeymoon to f the wife <laughs> that he's willing to let his son just walk down a beach in L.A. by himself. Uh, so they they drop the kid off on the beach. It's like your bum ass uncle lives on the beach he's somewhere. Out here somewhere. Like, he's a few just, miles down the beach. Yeah, he's a few miles down the beach. He's combing. <laughs> he's a beachcomber. I'm sorry, a beach bum. His uh, dad was so desperate to get rid of his kid. <laughs> Can't we just stop the car and throw him out now? <laughs> it's like that, uh, like that shot in Wet Hot American cool. Summer with the van where they just throw the kid out. <laughs> <laughs> Go find your uncle. Now, as this is happening, though, somebody is being chased and a car ejects off a, uh, uh, a cliffside. <laughs> And it's uh, it's an agent of some sort with a silver case. And, uh, he's okay. He's okay. Oh. And this oh, doesn't splash into the water. It hits hard <laughs> on the beach, like <laughs> low tide. It was just like that dude better have been strapped in like a motherfucker. What yeah. about their artistic choice, though, to contrast the fantasy car chase with the real life car chase? <laughs> And they're both just kind of dry and boring. Yeah, they're both low-speed car chases. Although, to be fair, the, the second car chase, there are shots of them driving the car where you can see out the window, and they are driving. It's not like the early scene where they're just <laughs> black backdrop. Gee, you sure know how to show a girl a good time. Settle down, sexy babe. <laughs> I'm 12. Oh, that's when he, she's, she's like trying to put on her lipstick, and he's like, women. You know he got that from his dad. Too. That's true, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I bet his father respects his wife very much. <laughs> very much so. Get in that fucking car, Dean. So I gotta throw you out of the car right now so I can fuck your, my wife that much sooner. <laughs> yeah. You mean my mom? I don't call her that. <laughs> she does she, call me daddy, though. <laughs> she does call me daddy. <laughs> Rich is done. I am. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's all right. It's been 10 minutes and we haven't seen one skeleton yet. So kid finds the box. What? And then he kind of finds his bum ass father who's uh, uncle. like, uncle, uh, uncle, uncle. uncle. Uh, who's coming to the beach and he's like, what you doing there kid? What you find in that box? He's like, I don't know. He's like, let's open it. Like instantly, like this guy doesn't give a fuck about this kid's well-being. <laughs> to, to be fair, his character is comically laid back. Can I bring the goggles? No, I don't think so. Oh, please. Okay. Played by Robert Carradine. Robert Carradine. From Revenge of the Nerds. Yep. <laughs> Robert Carradine. Thank you. I, I keep wanting to say David Carradine. <laughs> I know that's not right. David Carradine has his own set of hang-ups. Right. We're, we're talking about real people, okay? I'm sure when his brother died, he was all choked up about it. <laughs> <laughs> the girly giggle that gets me. Uh, uh, so kid finds these glasses and then he sees his uncle's bones uh, like, he turns, <laughs> with googly eyes the, the googly eyes it's like because uh, even though you see an x-ray of a skull through the entire uh, credits of the opening you do see eyeballs <laughs> in a skull through these x-ray goggles yeah once once. Just once. once. Yeah. And then they're like, we don't have the budget for that. that no, 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 they had the budget for it. They're gonna use that skeleton eight dozen times. They used it once because it was easier. <laughs> in fact, it 
probably would have been cheaper to use the skeleton than the other actors. <laughs> Throw that fucking skeleton away. We're not putting in that much effort ever again. <laughs> Someone has to hold it up. We gotta dress it. Yeah. The googly eyes keep falling out. We gotta get a, a hot glue gun to glue the googly eyes back in. We don't have hot glue budget. Yeah. I'm Olin Ray. I don't put clothes on things. <laughs> 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 Whoa. Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> They're barely buried. Shake it up. Whoa, whoa, what whoa. the hell? Cover that up. What? <laughs> yeah, leave it. No, leave it. <laughs> no, call the cops. George C. Scott, you ever heard of him? No. Yeah, me either. Take that, George C. Scott. <laughs> Damn, what did George C. Scott ever do to these people? Right? Oh, b -b 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 babe. It's a little uncomfortable. We got our little kid Googling, uh, uh, oogling. Uh, Nowadays, 12 year olds Google boobs. Now they Google boobs, but this time you use oogling, actual Google. boobs. Google boobs. Is that what Google came from? It's like, we can't call it oogle. Cause like, because every, that's creepy. We know what everyone's gonna use everyone's it for. Everyone's gonna use it to look at boobs. <laughs> It's Oogle. <laughs> uh, well, we then call it Boogle. <laughs> it's for boobs. Okay, Google. But we them. have to be a G-rated website for the kids. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. Is that your girlfriend? <laughs> he wishes. Yeah. Well. Uh, whoa. Let me try him. Uh, no. Uh, no. 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 Why do you show them all those jumping jacks that you do? <laughs> They're trying to keep it, like, innocent enough, but the fact that it's in a children's film at all is a little weird. Okay. Yes. You're, why, why, why at all, basically? I mean, if you, if you're not, if you don't want to make... the director of Evil Tunes. If you don't want to make a children's film, don't make a children's film. Yeah. Make a make a, a sex comedy about X-ray glasses. Yeah. Where the, the the college kid invents his own X-ray glasses and uses them to become cool and ogle the ladies. I zapped. You just make zap. <laughs> wow. I, I think they wanted to, yeah, they want to make a kid's movie. I mean, that's barely even an idea because as you said, he has the goggles a couple times early on and then the rest of the movie is just the bad guys trying to steal the goggles. No! Blast it! Now we do it my way. And then who has the goggles? We have to hide the goggles. If those x-ray goggles aren't recovered by the time he arrives. Not before you toss me the goggles. No, oh, he's got the goggles with him. Bring the goggles and come alone with the goggles. We have to go look in the house for the goggles. Oh, they moved the goggles somewhere else. Where are the goggles now? Claims to have a goggles. The goggles are in the box? We've recovered the goggles. The goggles. And the, the goggles, he doesn't use the goggles until the very end of the movie again. I think the big kahuna will give us exactly what we want. It's a, it's a strange thing, because it's like they had, they had the bare minimum amount of goggle scenes in there so they could call it the kid with x-ray eyes. And they used all that but, in the trailer, which we know because the trailer for the movie was before the movie. <laughs> but here's the thing though, it's a boring concept to begin with, so is that really gonna sell your movie? Yeah. Uh, it's a movie about a kid with x-ray eyes. Yeah, yeah, even in the, like them attempting, because David, not David Carradine, Robert Carradine, he's rich for some reason, that's a plot point. Why does it matter that he's rich? He has two houses, so they go back and forth between the two houses. Yeah. The bad guys break into the one house and you're like, oh, we're gonna get home alone shenanigans. But instead the kid just throws scalding hot water in one of the guy's faces and then that's the end of it. There's no like goofy hijinks. You take the front door, I'll go in the back. Okay, so here's where we get a home alone-esque sequence mm -hmm. in which maybe he can use the goggles to his advantage. Will to he see use where... the goggles to his advantage? He... Or will he just do something else? I'm naked. Yeah. Would you like some? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so what about using those goggles? 
The goggles are not going to be used far, for the rest of the movie. Far easier just to throw water in his face. Yeah, boiling and scalding the water. The movie's about the goggles! There was enough goggles that you could put it on the box and make it seem like it's going to be a cute science fiction movie about some magical goggles. <laughs> but then it's not. Because it's much easier not to have to worry about that shit. <laughs> Everything we've seen from the trailer has been in the first 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I, and I'm not actually afraid of a scalding pot of water anymore because the dude did. He's he just like, fine. ah! And a minute later, he's just like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to beat the shit out of you, kid. Yeah. It's like, so, like, the next hey, time. Hey, if a guy can survive his car going off a cliff and just slamming directly into rocks. And a little scalding hot water is nothing. This is a product that nobody at any level cared about. Well, it's, that, it's just a generic kids movie. You look at that cover and it's so like 90s kids movie. Whoa! Like the, the this wire, cover is so like, this looks like a It makes you want to see the movie. Yeah, exactly. It makes you want to pick it out during a competition. <laughs> uh, having a movie. <laughs> and you're thinking, it's going to be all right. You know what? I think, you know what? There's promise. It's a trick. It's a trick. They're, they're and they tricked you. Shame on they me. got you. They got me. Yeah. I don't And never you. again shall I be so naive. This, I mean, that I should have picked for... urinal. <laughs> Do you have the goggles? Where are the goggles? We moved the goggles. Now where are the goggles? Oh, I found the goggles. Oh, I found the goggles. Oh, the case doesn't have the goggles in them. That We're means the goggles are somewhere else. Where are the goggles now? If we're just following the formula, the kid with the x-ray eyes, he should get the x-ray goggles and then have some madcap adventures with the x-ray goggles. He looks at boobies, he looks at boobies, and he finds shit on the beach. He finds then, George C. Scott's Oscar. Right. And then the x-ray goggles go away for the next 80 minutes. Yeah, well, like Rich was saying, I think you were saying that he needs to, like, he gets so used to using the goggles throughout the movie, and then they're taken away. So then the, he, he, he wants to be a spy, right? Yeah. And so he gets the goggles, and then he, suddenly he can, now he can do spy things. Like, he, maybe he sneaks into the classroom, and he gets the test answers. He, he, does, Ooh, he lives yeah. out his spy fantasies, but yeah. then at the end... Oh, he gets caught. He gets captured. They take away his goggles. And now he has to rely on himself. Yeah, He's yeah. going to... Uh, uh, I actually memorized the answers to this test <laughs> when I read them through the desk of my teacher. I wasn't powerful because of the technology. I was powerful because of what I have inside yes. my brain. Yes. That's a plot to a movie. Are you looking for these? Get him! Get him! He has the goggles. We need to get the goggles. Jay, you're losing it. Just so little happening. Yeah, no. It's almost unbelievable. <laughs> Is this an experiment in cinematic minimalism? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's like if, if there was an episode of Scooby Doo that was just the hallway shot. <laughs> For 90 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> Just room to room. His father, though, had a way big transformation from douchebag that just wanted to rail his mom. Which we don't see. It no. just happens. Mom! Hey, cutie. Hey, sis. How you doing? You guys have a good time? Yeah, well, once Drake stopped playing blackjack, yeah, fun in the sun. In fact... <laughs> hey, bro! Yo, who are you? I thought she was going to say, we got divorced. <laughs> hey, honey, what do you think about this for home? Some nice fishnets on the walls, maybe a couple of dead starfish. How about one of these? <laughs> How did being at a casino all weekend turn him into like a beach bum? I attribute the father being in a good mood at the end of the movie to the fact that he just spent the entire weekend just railing the mom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what's weird is he shows up and he's now like, he's wearing like a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> he's like a beach bum, like his brother or whatever, like yeah. Robert Carradine. But they spent the whole weekend in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So why, at what point did he transform into a beach bum? Like, I don't Maybe know. Maybe they were at Mandalay Bay and then <laughs> I, I think, front, yeah, like, we can only infer because we saw the, him playing slots. Yeah. So we can only infer that at one point he was playing slots, the machine fell on him, oh. he had a major concussion, <laughs> and either had like a second life, like a near-death experience, and now has a zest for life, or uh, has you know massive personality disorder and just forgot The pressure on his brain is causing him to act. Basically. Like, yeah. eh, everything's or, fun! 
Or he had his own little movie there where he reevaluated his life and realized he did need to hang loose and rail the mom harder. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, all that, that, that is a scene that was shot, even though Fred Olin Ray knew it wouldn't end up in the movie. He just shot it anyway. Okay, rail the mom harder. <laughs> Get those tits bouncing! <laughs> I don't know why I'm using a crank film camera. I, isn't this a children's movie? Shut up and get real! <laughs> yeah, and then it ends and the, the goggles go back to so-and-so. The, the goggles, gets, they do nothing. They do the goggles. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the title of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do nothing. The goggles, movies. they do nothing. My eyes, the goggles do nothing. All right, so now is the time in which we get to choose the best of the worst. I have a feeling <laughs> that we're all going to be on the same page, but you never know. You never know. I th I'll, I'll go first, in fact. How about that? We'll go, we'll go down the table in, in this fashion. Okay. My choice for best of the worst is Slaughter Day. There, there is a, a pure joy to Slaughter Day of just kids living out their dreams of making their own Evil Dead. We've all been there. <laughs> Uh, and I was I was really happy to watch. Like you could hear them laughing because they kept a, a lot of them laughing in the movie. Doug, turn around! <laughs> <laughs> Just laughing. And that kind of joy is infectious, and you can see it uh, even when they're not physically laughing. The the rarest thing on on this show, the, the rarest thing, is enthusiasm and excitement and effort. I guess it's three things. <laughs> That's the, that's, those are the three. Those are the three rarest things on this show. <laughs> what we just, lack? Just, just, and this, this has it yeah. for 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 a moment, for a brief moment before they learn the valuable lesson <laughs> that, that we've all that learned. Filmmaking is a joyless misery. <laughs> but for that brief moment, we get to have some excitement. Yeah. And for that reason, I am going with Slaughter Day as my pick for best of the worst. Jay, no, oh, it's Slaughter Day. Oh. <laughs> it's it, it, it's funny because it's probably out of everything we've ever watched over the decade or so we've been doing the show, like the most technically bad. Oh! Even comparable movie feeders. Yeah, that's probably a good thing to point out. Is yeah, compared to feeders, which is another shitty shot on video movie mm -hmm. that's just so like bland and poorly put together. It's, it's, yeah, it's incredibly charming. They tried. For a brief moment, they tried. For half the movie, they tried, <laughs> which is more than we can say <laughs> for a lot of movies. Oh, no. It's true. Yeah. Timmy Higgy. Slaughter Day. Yay! Un unanimous. Yeah. Unanimous? Because get him. Get him. Just get him. Get him. Kill him. Just to get him. Get him, kill him. Get him, kill him. Get him, kill him. Get him, kill him. Get the enemy. Get, kill the enemy. Kill the enemy. Kill the enemy. Kill the enemy. <laughs> Uh, now, this doesn't happen often. We don't always have to destroy something, but I will leave it, uh, you know, we'll go the other way. We'll go the opposite way. The Tim kid with the x-ray <laughs> eyes. <laughs> the kid with the x-ray eyes. Yeah, oh yeah. We okay, know, yeah, okay. we know, I just, we know. I, do, I, I know. I, it makes my job easier here. Stop. I can just This be is like, a soulless product that nobody wants to buy. Yeah. Yep. Action. Go. Tape. Let's look at the tape. Oh my, oh my God! Go. All right, we got. Oh. Go.
What's wrong? Oh, Jackie, okay? Yeah, just, yeah. Oh, fuck. It's just oh, 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 the motion blur. You know, it's fuck. Hold on. Uh, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on. Right. Okay, let's keep going. <sighs>